Welcome to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live, where we offer the new sports, weather, traffic, and entertainment our drivers want and need. I'm your host, Shelley Johnson. The trucking and logistics industries employ lots of veterans. At least one out of every 10 truckers is a U.S. veteran. In an industry that's constantly seeking to recruit new drivers, military veterans have proven to have many of the hard and soft skills needed to succeed in the truck freight industry. From operating heavy machinery to teamwork, determination, and pride, military life prepares people for challenging and critical jobs. Today, we have two veterans in the trucking industry with us to talk about the great contributions former military personnel do for transportation and shipping. Jeff Hopper is a United States Marine Corps veteran and chief marketing officer of DAT Freight and Analytics. Shemaine Jeffers is a fleet owner and owner-operator and CEO of CDL for Life. Both Jeff and Shemaine have been trendsetters in the trucking industry, and we're really happy to have them on the show. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Shelley. Great to be here. Thank you, know, this, you. You're very welcome. This is a wonderful treat, especially since we've got Veterans Day coming up. People are thinking about the military, and this is so great. I thought we could start with you both talking a little bit about your backgrounds how long were you in the military? What branch of the military? And how did you get into the trucking industry? I don't know who wants to go first. So <laughs> uh, I'm happy to go first. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so I was, uh, well, my kind of story, you know, the mil- what the military meant to me was opportunity. So I, I joined the Marine Corps when I was 17 and uh, really, you know, was a farm boy from Missouri and didn't really, you know, have a lot of, you know, opportunities financially for college and that sort of thing. And, and the, the Marine Corps gave me the opportunity to learn some skills, um, uh, which, you know, they put you through a lot of training and school and, and also be able to, you know, help me with college tuition, going to college at night. So I was in about nine years, uh, stationed all over the world. Um, and so that's, it did make it hard to go to college, you know, consistently uh, when you're deploying all the time. But I managed to get a computer science degree um, uh, while going to school at night in the Marine Corps and was very appreciative of that. And uh, they helped me with the tuition costs of that. And then I was able to, um, when I got out after nine, a little over nine years, uh, got a job at Hewlett Packard in the high tech industry. Mm -hmm. And learned a lot about, you know, I had a computer science degree, so software development and, and uh, a lot of different things like that. And um, throughout my career, you know, I've worked in a lot of tech companies, Hewlett Packard, uh, Intel, Polaroid, T-Mobile. Um, I was the CMO at T-Mobile and a couple of others. Um, I've, you know, started and ran my own businesses. Um, and, uh, you know, I look back at my Marine Corps training and, you know, a lot of the things that I got out of the Marine Corps, just in terms of discipline and structure, um, adaptability was really key. And it's helped me, you know, every step of the way to, you know, uh, be reasonably successful. Um, I'm fairly new to the transportation industry. So um, I've been the chief marketing officer at DAT now for three and a half years. And, um, and it's just been a great opportunity. Uh, It's been a crazy three and a half years with the pandemic. (laughs) <laughs> in the oh, middle yes, of that yes. and responding to all those challenges. Um, but I love my job. I love our customers and, um, uh, you know, look forward to serving everybody even more going forward. But that's kind of my story and how I got here. So it's never boring, especially when you're dealing with the transportation industry. <laughs> no doubt. And, you know, in, in our business uh, running, you know, the load board and some of the analytics that we do is, we're all about helping our customers resolve the uncertainty that is inherent in this industry, whether it's hurricanes and storms or regulations or all the number of things that get thrown at this transportation industry that makes it a, a daily siege, I call it. Oh, it really of, is. Good description. Of, uh, over, over overcoming uncertainty. And uh, so it gives me both a lot of respect for our, our customers and what they have to deal with day in, day out, but also a good feeling of how we help them to do that. That's terrific. Shemaine, what was, what's your background? What branch of the military were you in and when did you, how long were you in? 
Hi, Shelly. So, um, yeah, um, my background, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, originally. And so opposite of Jeff, I'm from a big city and lots of opportunities around. So I actually came from a military family. Um, my stepdad, who was one of the first Tuskegee Airmen and a colonel in the oh, very cool. Air Force. Yes. Um, and my mom, who also was in the Air Force, and um, I always knew I wanted to at least just go and serve my country. So um, I was actually in college at St. John's University. And I, you know, decided um, school was very expensive. I couldn't really um, afford to um, continue my education without being able to um, work and I was working full time and going to school full time and things became uh, difficult financially. And I said, you know what, it's time I went into a recruiting office and I signed up and um, I joined and I joined the army instead of uh, the Air Force like my mom wanted me to because with the army you get to pick your MOS. And I wanted to be a military police officer at the time in 98, I'm sorry, in 94, it mm -hmm. was the closest I could get to infantry. As okay. a woman, right. um, it allowed me to be on uh, in combat uh, field with um, being a military police and learn how to shoot all kinds of weapons. So that's why I joined as a military police officer. Um, I got stationed in Puerto Rico, lucky me. <laughs> And um, after I got out, I got out, um, I didn't complete my service in Puerto Rico, got out because I had kids and no daycare. So I still wanted to um, be of service when I got back to Virginia, which is where my family is now. I went into the reserves and uh, did my reserve time as a military police officer as well. Um, so my whole family, uh, um, three of my, ch of my five children also, joined the military as well. And my brother, after he seen me do it, he did it as well. So like, we're all a military family. And um, like Jeff said, uh, I learned so much in the military. It helped me grow as, a, as an adult, as it helped me grow um, with my career. And once I got out of the military, I just knew um, with having children now, I didn't want to do uh, become a civilian police officer. And I looked at truck driving because uh, I saw that there was an opportunity to go to school and learn a trade really quickly and still make a good living for myself. So I decided to go to truck driving school. And once I did that, um, all of my military training and background, I, I know it helped me being a truck driver and being a female on the road because I was very much aware of my surroundings and I was already used to, um, it had been drilled in my head to be on time. Mm -hmm. And um, to, so working independently as a truck driver and being on my own um, after getting out the military, it was a really easy transition. Oh, it really would be. That was actually something I was going to touch on. The military is really excellent training for so many things. It provides discipline. Uh, people learn punctuality, how to plan their day. Um, I, I think that makes veterans valuable in pretty much any industry they go into. But especially with trucking, I think it's a natural transition, isn't it? Oh, yes. So you were saying that you touched on some of the things that you learned. What, what were some of the other things you learned in the military that really helped you when you decided to become a driver? Um, well, for me, um, being a military police officer, I was already um, aware of a lot of the traffic rules and regulations. Um, so my training also helped me, as I said, being a woman um, and being out there on that road. Safety um, measures were a lot easier for me to, you know, just like I said, being aware of my surroundings, being aware of safety and precautions and being able to protect myself. Mm -hmm. um, I did carry things like um, and a lot of people um, may not know this, but I didn't carry a, a, a gun or anything to protect myself. I had tactical pins on my truck that I placed, you know, all over my truck because you can break 
glass with a tactical pen if needing to get out of that truck. And you, you can also use it for protection. So right. just my, my um, combat training, being um, an MP and, and just being in the military in general, I think it really prepared me to get out there, be safe. I did 20 years on the road and thank God, you know, I was very safe and very cautious and, and aware of my surroundings. And I would think it would give you a lot more confidence. And certainly if you're in a tough situation, having been an MP too, I'm sure you, you had uh, conflicts you'd run into. It wouldn't be daunting when you're out on the road and you probably have really good situational awareness and all of that too. Absolutely. Um, you, you definitely have situational awareness. Um, this is just something... Um, MP or not, um, in the military, you're just trained, you know, everything is repetitive and you're, you're trained to look out for, you know, the possibilities of dangers and, and things that are around you. So safety was something that was, you know, big. And a lot of people may not know, but, um, and that this is the route I could have taken, but a lot of military police, they do transition into being state troopers okay. or police yeah. officers. And so I actually helped, it actually helped me a lot when I would go into, get pulled into a way station or get pulled over by a state trooper. And I would mention that I was prior military, military police. And it was ironic how many military police officers I ran into. And they just kind of, we kind of look out for each other out there on that's the sweet. road. So, so you, that was you, awesome. You had some camaraderie there. But that's, yes. that's good. Excellent. Jeff, how would you say the military helped you in terms of transitioning into a civilian job? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I love Charmaine's story and mine's a little different kind of working in, you know, technology uh, more so, but uh, you know, I would say I always felt like I coming out of the military, I had an advantage over some of my peers or people that were doing similar things that I was doing just in terms of, I would say, first and foremost, discipline, Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just being on task with the mission and, you know, kind of, it's always about the mission, you know, and being and accomplishing it. And so you prepare yourself, you get, you know, you're, you're always training for that, you know, so staying in shape, staying sharp, getting up early, you know, being ahead of the game. You know, I found that a lot of my peers that I worked with, they weren't as prepared or as, you know, maybe serious about the mission. It was more like a job. To them, you know, and I, I, I certainly can speak for the Marine Corps. It's not a job, you know, it's like the Navy's got the thing, you know, it's not a job, it's an adventure. Um, but, you know, you don't last very long in the, in the Marine Corps. If, if you, if you think it's just a job, you're like punching a clock. Um, it's a way of life. There's a mission. You, you never want to let your teammates down. So you're, you're always, you know, trying to be as good as you can be to help the team win and, and accomplish the mission. So I would say that's number one is I always felt like I had kind of an advantage with that, but I also found that life and, and work is all about, you know, overcoming obstacles and problems. Yeah. And, in, and in the military, I think in general, all services, you're constantly put into a situation where you have to overcome and adapt to a situation. And you mentioned the word confidence, you, you can't go through a lot of the Marine Corps training and not come out with confidence. You know, you're doing things that normal people don't do, whether it's repelling or, or, you know, firing dangerous weapons, throwing grenades, whatever the case may be, you know, you're in a dangerous job sure. and need confidence and, and stuff always happens you know? and you have to over, you have to overcome and adapt to, to, a, a, you know, situations. I remember, you know, I was stationed in the Philip in the jungle in the Philippines for six months. And there was just, you know, every day was like adapting to situations, whether it be weather or whatever. And there's no complaining. You know, you just adapt, do your job, you know, get through it and and, and get to the other side. So I feel like, you know, certainly going into civilian life, that made those jobs seem pretty easy in some in some respects. Well, you would learn problem solving and forward thinking. Uh, you'd be able to anticipate how to solve problems. A lot of people throw up their hands. They get frustrated instead of having to step back and go, okay, 
this is what I need to do. So you probably develop more analytical thinking having had that yeah. training. Yeah, for sure. And then I, I would say the other key element is teamwork. Um, yeah. You know, you yeah. win a battle by yourself. That's true. You know? Very true. And so you have to work as a team and the, synchro the, the synchronicity of a unit and everybody has their job. And again, you don't let down the other people. Um, you know, that's true in, in whether it's truck driving or, you know, working in, in, in software technology, you know, it takes a team. Sure. It takes the ability to work together to, to tackle problems and to, you know, again, accomplish that mission. That's so important because there's so many people who don't play well with others. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't learned that skill of it's, it's a team effort here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no man is an island. A lot of people don't realize that either. So, right. We have to go to break here. I want to talk more about you folks being veterans and the wonderful contributions that veterans are giving the trucking industry and all the different jobs they do. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show here on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson, and I'm talking with Jeff Hopper and Shemaine Jeffers. They're both veterans and they work in trucking. Stay tuned for more coming up. The trucking industry keeps America running thanks to the 3.36 million professional truck drivers who deliver everyday goods to 80% of American communities who rely on trucking for that last mile. The industry represents a diverse group with nearly half of drivers at 42% as minorities. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, educates the public on the essentiality of trucking by telling the story of trucking and its positive impact on our economy, communities, and lives. Learn how you can join the industry movement by visiting truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio. Live. I'm Shelby Johnson, and I'm talking with Jeff Hopper. He's a U.S. Marine Corps veteran and chief marketing officer of DAT Freight and Analytics, along with Shemaine Jeffers. She's a fleet owner and owner operator and CEO of CDL for Life. We've been talking about what it's like to be a veteran and how the military really provides a great foundation. Jeff, it, we were talking about this off air. The military is a big supply chain that offers a foundation in transportation. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Because it's rather interesting how veterans can really easily transition into the trucking industry with the training they have. Yeah, for sure. I mean, anybody who has deployed and been part of a major, you know, operation or troop movement, um, it is a, a supply chain miracle in itself to pull those things off with all the equipment and people and fuel and food and supplies that are needed to support, you know, an, an operation or, or, you know, think of it as like to go to battle. Um, and so everyone that's involved in that gets a pretty good feel for how supply chain works and also how critical it is. You know, in our personal lives, we look at an empty store shelf of something you might want to buy and say, oh, that sucks. You know, supply chain kind of broke down somewhere along the line and there isn't availability of something you want to buy. Uh, you know, in the military, it's, you know, it can be life and death. I mean, it's either, you know, you have uh, ammunition or food or, or, or supplies to, uh, complete your mission and the operation, or you're kind of screwed. Um, so they're very, there's a lot of people in the military who are very, very good at supply chain and managing those movements. There's a lot of trucks involved in moving those supplies. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's people in the military that, that do this every day, all day long under very difficult conditions and very difficult time pressures. And I would just add that, um, the discipline involved again with how that works, you know, it has to work like a clock. Yep. And I think the supply chain that we're involved in every day, all day long, delivering on time, picking up on time, you know, all, all of the players in the supply chain in civilian life, you know, the, the timing is critical. Um, you know, sure. the technologies involved are very similar to make sure that happens. And I think we've got a lot of people that are coming out of the military who are steeped in the ability to do that. Absolutely. Well, when you think about it, uh, wars have been won and lost just by supplies. Absolutely. People <laughs> don't get their supplies. They don't get their food, the clothing. 
the guns and munitions that they need, they aren't going to do so well against the opposition. Yeah, it's literally a major, you know, uh, military strategy to yeah. cut off supply lines. Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of screwed, whether they're freezing in winter conditions, and you can look in history at those, or mm -hmm. the ships that got sunk in World War II trying to cross the Atlantic to resupply, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, that was the entire German strategy was sink all the supply ships and, yeah. and they don't have anything to fight with. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Shemaine, what are your thoughts on all of that? Um, so just like Jeff was saying again, um, being able to work in a high stress environment is part of military life, especially when they're overseas and they're dealing with combat situations and supplies has to get to these soldiers, right? Because they need their equipment. They're, they're gonna need these supplies to operate. And, um, you know, I'm in total agreement. It's like all of this stuff is preparing our, our military. If they are interested in getting out and, and transitioning, this is stuff that they've, they've, they've already been trained for. This is stuff that they're already learned. Um, they're goal oriented to complete their mission. And so when you're giving these tasks as whether you're a truck driver or you're um, in logistics and whatever you're doing, you're given a task and you, you're really able to complete that mission because you've already gone through other stressful environments um, and encountered these, these uh, you know, things prior to you coming out of the military. So um, I definitely agree with everything that you guys, you know, were saying. I would think having been in the military, a trucking company would find that you're a, a more responsive employee. You're quicker to uh, be on task and maybe learn more quickly because a lot of this is training you've had. So the regimentation and the things that you need to know as a driver or whatever particular job you have in the transportation industry, it's just a natural transition and it makes for a much better worker. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. Um, mm -hmm. Some of my best drivers are veterans. And it definitely does because, again, this is something that's a learned behavior. And just knowing that you have a, a mission to complete and you have to be on time with deliveries and you don't need anybody really micromanaging you because you've been taught to be able to step up and take control if needed. And so all of that stuff comes into play when you when you look at a veteran compared to somebody who hasn't had that kind of training and instilled in them, you know, they we, that is the that is the key to just being successful is learning how to um, really be out, able to get out here and do the job. And I think it's a it's a good it's a good transition for a lot of military personnel who want or are looking for a good civilian um, career is to look at logistics. I would think too, with the training you have in the military, when you're out there driving with all of the idiots that do stupid things, you know how to keep your cool. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> what we call military bearing, um, you that is something you learn. So you're, again, um, dealing with um, these drivers, dealing with people cutting you off every day, you're just learning to deal with it in a different manner because we all know that um, if you've been trained, um, like me as a military police officer, you've been trained, uh, all soldiers actually have been trained to kill, right? You, you, that's your job. That's your number one job in the military, regardless of what your MOS is. Right. And you have to learn to control your temper. You have to learn because you've been trained on weapons. You've been trained with hand-to-hand -hand combat. You re really aren't out there um, just blowing your top off because somebody cut you off and now you're angry and you're ready to hurt someone. No, you have you have learned to control and kind of de-escalate the situation. And so that's more professionalism that I think is coming to the table with um, a veteran in most cases. That's super valuable. And that makes for a safer driver because uh, every day you've got a challenge when you're out there on the freeways. And I can't say the drivers, the four wheelers are getting any better. It seems like 
a lot of them are getting far worse, especially with texting and driving and distractions and all of the above. And they have a lot of impatience too. They sure and do. I, and I think that that discipline that Shamane's talking about is is right on. <clears throat> you know, you you learn that, you know, day one, literally the day you get off the bus at the at boot camp. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you you learn exactly how to how to do that. And there's also there's a set of rules, you know, and, um, you know, some people don't necessarily like that in the military, you know, there's just so many rules that you have to go by. There are reasons for every one of them, Mm -hmm. but then when you get out and you are now in in a different kind of rule-based environment in trucking, um, I I think, you know, people with that past experience know how to accept some of those rules and, Mm -hmm. and, and have sought to understand why those rules exist and and kind of stay within them a bit more. And so I think that's really important too. Um, I, I would just also say, you know, that I also love, Charmaine, how you talked about that military bearing. Yeah. Um, there's a presence about someone coming out of the military that you can see. If you've been in the military, you can spot a person who has been through that training. They just mm-hmm. kind of stand out. You know, yeah. there's great employees of all kinds from all backgrounds, you know, um, but then you you kind of have this, you know, bearing and decorum that goes about a person who's been through that training. Yes. They tend to, I mean, even to this day, when I, when I am dressing for a, a meeting, you know, a, a major you know, event, you know, I make sure that my buttons are in alignment, you know, my belt buckle, my boots are, sh- my, my shoes are shined, you know, it's uh-huh. like you, just, you, you have a presence, you know, you, you make sure you have a neatly, you know, a neat appearance, you know, uh, you're ready for inspection. Uh, you know, there's all those things that carry over that you're not even that conscious of oftentimes, but, you know, you carry that forward and you can spot that person out of a crowd. Um, I'm almost sometimes had to uh, be uh, uh, aware that when I was going into uh, shippers and receivers and I'm talking to someone about picking up a load, you know, I almost sometimes find myself going into a parade rest dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And just um, standing there like um, and I had to catch myself because I'm just so used to, um, you know, being knowing that you have to show a level of respect, like you said, when you're dealing with people. And um, yeah, I think that just being in the military, I know for me and it's, and this is why I have encouraged my children as well, you know, to look into joining the military because there's just so many different career fields, almost everything that you can do out in the civilian world, you can probably find a job for it in the military. And so just letting them know that the options and opportunities were there. um, I know that now you can go to your unit and request getting like um, your CDL A, you can get your class age license through the military um, and not have to come out and pay for a school. Oh, that's wonderful. Get get that certification. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's and I mean, and it's awesome to do that because it saves you a lot of money then um, to get your uh, class A while you're in the military and let them pay for it. And then you can get experience in the field while you're in the military. So you come out, you're not a novice, right? Absolutely. And now um, I know when I got out, they didn't have um, as many programs mm-hmm. that they have now. But I mean, now you've got troops to truckers and you've got Um, a lot of companies that will have programs in place to hire veterans and even pay for their schooling. So that's awesome. It's wonderful. And certainly the discipline that you have, having been a veteran, you know how to interact with people. You know how to, as we discussed, uh, control your temper, that sort of thing. And and certainly that's really essential when you're dealing with maybe being pulled over by DOT or something. you, You know how to conduct yourself. And many times you might get off with a warning instead of a citation. (laughs) That's huge. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Because I think diplomacy is something so many people uh, don't necessarily have skills with. And the military gives you those kind of attributes. I think it emanates around what Charmaine said around respect. You know, if you've ever interacted with a military person, active duty or even veteran, they always talk with a, they always treat people with a, a respect, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you'll hear, you know, ma'am or sir, you know, you'll hear, and it carries over. And it's just a sign of respect when you're dealing with somebody 
and and you want to make sure that that you respect their their position their perspective where they're coming from and you know i think we all know on the receiving side of that that goes a long ways right oh, to, oh my gosh this person you know we can work through a problem <laughs> mm -hmm. and that seems like respect that's that's a word that uh, seems to be lacking in our society right now so yeah it's definitely an attribute that's super, super definitely valuable. use a lot more of that absolutely uh, you know shelly i want to point out one other thing that um you know, if, if you're a, if you're a veteran and looking to you know to to get into a, a, a career in the supply chain or or truck driving, there's another element that you learn. Um, you know, if you've been in a little while, and that's leadership. Um, I, I have found that the military, certainly the Marine Corps, was one of the best leadership development you know places, um, just by nature and need you know, at very, you know, almost every job requires you to lead other people, lead a mission, you know, and you're trained from almost day one of how to do that. And I've, I've really not found any other place in civilian world that teaches fundamental leadership and how to lead people and how to, how to accomplish something through other people. And I would encourage anyone looking to to find a, a career outside of the military, you know, in, in supply chain to really highlight that in their experience mm -hmm. and, and their interviews, you know, like Good talk point. about how, how you have led people and what it takes to lead people. And I know I went through a lot of leadership training in the Marine Corps and, and to this day apply that in my civilian jobs. And it's some of the most valuable training I've ever received. And, and I want to just, um, um, Say as well, like you said, from day one, um, a, a young girl from Brooklyn and I got to Alabama for training and um, I really didn't have um, any leadership skills. And right away, um, my drill sergeant took the weakness of me being shy, me being timid, and he made me, you know, squad leader. And I was like, oh boy, I don't want this responsibility but it was something that I had to learn and I learned right away, you know, that it, this was a team effort and that you had to have some kind of leadership for others to follow. And he just put me in that position. And that was like right in the beginning. And I, I learned leadership skills as well um, early on. So that does help you. And that is something that you said you should be putting on your like resumes and, mm -hmm. and stuff if you have that, if you have been in the military. Absolutely. And a lot of people are not good leaders. And that is something in an organization. Organizations are looking for. And leadership skills are good just as is a team. Certainly, you're going to be dealing with, depending on the size of the company, other drivers and all of that, you get along better. And somebody has to take charge sometimes. Um, you can't just have yeah. everybody <clears throat> running here and there without some sort of guidance. Well, you learn pretty quickly. Mm -hmm know how to get people to follow <laughs> you know there you go um, that's that's you know, leadership by example leadership by doing um yeah. you know it's not just about barking orders you know honestly um mm -hmm. and uh the last company that my 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 boss the owner of the company he he was saying you know gosh pe people just tend to want to follow you you know because and and so person over here has never really led people and i can't just order the people in that team or organization to follow them. I just, you know, it's, you can't do that. Not in civilian life. You can't say, go follow that person. You know? Right. <laughs> That's an order. You can't you say. Know, yeah. You know, and so, you know, you, 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 again, I think, um, you know, the developing a climate of motivation, I learned that in the Marine Corps. I mean, so, cause you know, motivated people accomplish about anything you want them to do. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Within reason, you know, if, they, if they're inspired and they're motivated, they will move mountains. Right. And you learn these kind of skills, you get a lot more cooperation and a lot more productivity by pulling a chain rather than pushing it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You can get it, a person to go in the direction you want. And as a team, that's that's essential. Well, we know every now and again, you got to push somebody. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes give them a good swift kick and then you know what. Yeah, you know. <laughs> But that, that's human nature. But certainly you've got the skills to do that effectively without maybe majorly offending them and <laughs> causing a brawl of some sort. So, yeah. 
we have to go to break here. Uh, I definitely want to unpack more about this. Uh, it, it's wonderful. And I, I think it's really giving our listeners a good perspective of how veterans really provide such a wonderful benefit to the transportation industry. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson, and I'm talking with Jeff Hopper and Shemaine Jeffers. They're both veterans, and they work in the transportation industry, and they've got some great perspectives. Stay tuned for more right here on TNC Radio Live. TNC Radio Live is proud to carry the Steve Summers Overnight Drive Show. TNC Radio Live is dedicated to commercial drivers. We offer the news, traffic, and weather you need, and the entertainment, sports, talk, music, and celebrity interviews you want to hear 24 7. We have original shows and trucker podcasts that feature some of your favorites, like Ice Road Alex Demogorski and America's Truck and Sweetheart Marcia Campbell. TNC Radio Live is convenient and designed for professional drivers. The best part is we're free, and you can listen anywhere you are on the road. With just one tap, you can tune into Steve Summers and us right on your phone. Simply download our app by going to app.tncradio.live. That's app.tncradio.live. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live. I'm your host, Shelley Johnson, and I'm talking with Jeff Hopper, a Marine Corps veteran and chief marketing officer at DAT Freight and Analytics, along with Shemaine Jeffers, who's a fleet owner and owner operator and CEO of CDL for Life. Jeff and Shemaine, we've been having a great discussion on veterans and the importance of military and the great training that really makes it a wonderful transition into the trucking industry. I thought we could talk a little bit about both of the companies you have and who you work for and, and what the companies do. Okay, so um, CDL for Life, it originally started as a Facebook group, and I started it to just give out information and knowledge to the truck drivers out there on Facebook as a platform for them to come and learn about the industry. It then turned into a trucking company and trucking business management company. So um, since we've started the Facebook page and then I turned it into a truck, into a company, um, I've acquired um, trucks of my own. And then I've taken on a lot of other people's businesses where I step in because we have a lot of owner operators who transition from drivers to business and they don't really actually know the business side of trucking. So we step in with our company and we manage their business and we help them to understand how to be successful or at least profitable in the trucking industry. And so we teach different educational classes and then we also have a lot of resources and networks. Um, I also help them establish uh, their business. I help them get equipment and we even funnel drivers right from our Facebook group to put into their trucks that we then manage them, manage for them. So that's pretty much what CDL for Life does. Wow, that's a lot. Now, where do people reach out to you? Do you, do you have a website? And... Absolutely. Um, it's www.cdlforlife.com and they can reach me at the same with my email at cjeffers at cdlforlife.com or they can call our 800 number, which is uh, 833-235-5433. Now, CDL for life, if the four is a number versus the word F-O-R, correct. correct? Correct. CDL, the number four, life, L-I-F-E. Don't forget the four because CDL life is a, is a whole different company. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why I thought I'd clarify that so that people Thank don't go you. on the wrong website. Wow. It sounds like you stay busy, Shemaine. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Um, but I love what I'm doing as an entrepreneur and I love driving trucks for 20 years. So the transitioning from truck driver into business owner has been a great experience for me. Um, we're still growing and I love it. And um, I enjoy helping other truck drivers achieve their goals Um becoming business owners as well. That's terrific. And it's empowering having your own business it, and all it, of that. It, yep. 
It's awesome for me. Um, being a being a woman as well, and seeing more women get into the industry, and just helping, like my daughter who's uh, twenty four now, is also has her CDL, oh, and so cool. it's just exciting for me to see all these women get their CDLs, and you know, it's exciting just to see how we've grown, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, so that the the group itself. On Facebook, if you want to join it, just go to Facebook and look for CDL, the number four life. And it's the group with 53,000 members in it. Wow, that's terrific. I would say that's a major growth. That's neat. Thank you. Now, Jeff, DAT Freight and Analytics, you're the chief marketing officer, so you're pretty busy. What does your company do? Yeah. First of all, I just want to say uh, it's great working with Shemaine and and just her her story is just phenomenal. Just congrats on all the success, oh, Shemaine. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah. So DAT Freight and Analytics. Um, I've been at the company three and a half years, like I mentioned before. Um, DAT actually is an acronym. It stands for Dial a Truck. So a uh, long time ago, 44, 45 years ago now, um, we started as a uh, you know kind of a truck stop in Portland, Oregon, um, and basically was founded on the principles of helping truckers to, um, you know, manage their business and have, have, you know, find loads, et cetera. That kind of turned into helping, you know, put post-it notes on, on the, on the little cork boards in the truck stop of, you know, call this number, they, they might have a load for you. And then that turned into the, the monitors that were in truck stops. And, and it kind of got more and more sophisticated over the last 44 plus years. Um, and now it's a major software platform um, uh, for which we have, um, we're running right now at like 240,000 transactions a minute of people posting trucks or posting loads. And so it's a marketplace um, where you can find loads or find trucks between shippers and 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 truckers, and um, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We we have, you know, probably a million and a half loads a day go through. You know, full truckloads of freight go through our load board uh, in a day. It's wow. uh, a pretty big operation, and we're just you know happy to be part of, you know, I think the livelihood of a lot of owner operators out there, that's by far and away our biggest customer. Um, we, uh, we, you know, we take it very serious that we're the, the lifeblood of, you know, those, those owner operators, uh, you know, making a, a successful business. Uh, it's a tough business. And so, mm. you know, we pride ourselves on giving them the very best service, the very best loads and very best, you know, help and information to be successful uh, in this business. Now we can't control diesel fuel prices. <laughs> or, it'd be nice if you could. I know it'd be nice. Oh. And we don't even, we don't have any influence over the rates, like the freight rates at all. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we can do is we have great intelligence, uh, you know, data that we can tell, um, you know, an owner operator, here's what the rate, the competitive rate could be, you know, just based upon the data. We don't set them or anything else, but we provide tools that can help you to understand like, oh, what should, you know, this this load on this lane at this time be, you know, what should it pay? And what we find is, uh, you know, the owner operators that really lean into that and use the tools um, have more successful businesses and Shamin's one of them. <laughs> so That's excellent. So, Shemaine, um, so, you've, you've actually worked with DHC in, in your growth? Yes. Oh, yes. wonderful. I, I use DAT. It's the number one load board that we use okay. um, for our company and for dispatching our trucks. And so I definitely um, work with DAT on anything that, you know, they're needing from us because, you know, I teach my drivers or teach my own operators. Like Jeff said, they have a lot of tools that will help you be successful. And a lot of owner operators don't even know that they can post their truck wherever they are, just so that some of these brokers can reach out to them first and they can possibly get a load that will never even touch the load board. So, um, and just, they can go on there for all kinds of information. So yeah, definitely once when um, DAT um, linked up with me, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm more than, you know, grateful to, to talk about and unite with you guys on doing anything because it, it helps my business tremendously. 
That's wonderful. Yeah, we, um, you know, we 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 put about um, 500 million loads through our load board last year, um, and a big chunk of those, you know, um, are only on only get posted only to and are available only on our on our load board, and so we take great pride in that. You know, eventually a load will get covered <laughs> somehow, some way, but. Um, you know, we've become, especially through COVID and the pandemic, uh, you know, kind of a primary source um, of where you can find, you know, trucks and where um, owner operators can find freight um, very, very quickly, whether it's a backhaul, you know, um, that's a, it's a big thing. You know, we, um, if, uh, if you're, if you're running freight, you know, uh, if you're running empty and not having like a backhaul, uh, you know, check with us because more than likely with all that freight we in our in our platform, we can find you a backhaul and you don't run empty. And that's both good for the environment, by the way, oh, but yeah. also good yeah. for your bottom line. Good for the environment, good for business, all of the above. All the now, above, yeah. Where do people reach out to DAT Freight and Analytics? Oh, DAT.com. That's simple. And, uh, and you can go there and get lots of information. Um, you can call us on the 1-800 number and talk to our, we have award-winning service people. Uh, I manage the customer service organization as well. So I take great pride. I'm biased. Uh, mm-hmm. they, they truly are amazing, highly trained to help you with any number. Of, you know, if you're, if you're someone out there who's wanting to get into uh, maybe become an owner operator, maybe you're a, you know, a, a, a company driver today and you, you want to start out on your own, we can help you with your getting the, your authority, um, Charmaine's also a great resource, by the way. She's helped a lot of people do the same thing. And uh, there's, it's, it's, you know, not that hard. It's a tough business, but we can get you started, uh, get you hooked up with great loads and, and, you know, making money on your own. And that's what owner operators want to do. I mean, they, they like their freedom. They want to make money while they're doing it too. They want to be their own boss. <laughs> yes. Don't we all? I, a lot of entrepreneurs are that way. It, it, yeah. It's the American way. It's just freedom and then freedom of the open road, too. I mean, it's just um, um, drivers are kind of the last of the cowboys, aren't they? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and it's interesting. Um, just this past year, one of the things we started to help with, you know, is uh, I don't know if you heard of this AB5 that happened oh, yeah. in, in California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you know, we're on the side of the trucker on this one. And, and you know, the, 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 that new rule, and by the way, it's expected that that new law is going to um, go into more states. Oh, and, I know. I've been hearing that. It's yeah, wow. so it's probably inevitable for a variety of reasons that we don't have to debate here. But if you are a, a driver affected by that, one of the things you can do is get your own authority, become an owner, owner operator, and you can haul that freight on your own. You just can't do it at, on contract. is is really the the yeah. issue. So if you're out there and you and and you're you know having a, you're at risk of the, of this happening to you through these kinds of new regulations, uh, give us a call. We can we can kind of connect you and um, kind of keep you going with your equipment and uh, but just do it as an owner operator. That's really good to know because I think that there are a lot of owner operators going. Uh, what am I to do now? Avoid. I think a lot of them are avoiding California altogether, and that's losing revenue. Yeah, there's a lot of freight yeah. in California. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, a lot of outbound freight with produce and everything else. So uh, definitely, that's a market you don't want to miss out on. This has been wonderful speaking with you both, Jeff. And Shemaine, I really appreciate it. And I think you've given our listeners a wonderful perspective of how important veterans are and what a wonderful addition they truly are, really, to any industry, but especially the transportation industry. Yeah, it's been a pleasure being here. And I I would be remiss if I didn't give it a shout out to my Marine Corps uh, brothers and sisters out there. Marine Corps birthday is tomorrow, November 10th. So Ah. goodbye to all those devil dogs out there. Semper Fi, absolutely. That's awesome, and thank you, Shelly, for having me as well. And to all the veterans, we thank you for your service. Thank you both for your service as well, and thank you for being on the show. You've been listening to the Truckers Network radio show on TNCRadio.live. Stay tuned for more great programming coming up. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNCRadio.live and the Truckers Network radio show. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of tncradio.live and its partners. 
for inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast of the Truckers Network Radio Show.